Under the Mango Tree Grace Notes International Many years ago, located high in the mountains on the island of Jamaica, was a very special place, especially for children, by the name of Faith Home. Little did a young man, by the name of Charlie, that his life would change in a very wonderful way. One night, while Charlie was in church listening about a place for children in Jamaica, the Lord touched his heart to go and be part of that work. Little over two weeks, Charlie found himself in the mountains of Jamaica, at a place called Faith Home. This place was rich with all kinds of fruit, fresh air, vegetation everywhere and the smell of sugarcane as the sun shone down on it. Charlie would soon realize that his life would become part of the lives of the children. They would look up to him as a role model. The difference in skin color never made a difference. They were all the same. They were one. But what won the hearts of the children was that Charlie could sing and play the guitar. So after the daily chores and meals, Charlie and the children would gather underneath the mango tree. Now the mango tree seemed to be as tall as a mountain. Its trunk was so wide, it took four people hand in hand to circle it. Its branches protected us from the sun. Like the most beautiful canopy you could ever see. But the best part of the mango tree was the thousands of delicious juicy mangoes that hung from the branches. When you looked up into the mango tree, very often you would find children with their legs over a branch eating mango after mango. So you see, there was no better place to meet than the mango tree. As Charlie and the boys played under the mango tree, Charlie was introduced to such games as dominoes, or we should say the Jamaican way of playing dominoes. Other games didn't make sense to Charlie because the rules of the game were constantly being changed. One game was called Yuck Yuck. To this day Charlie still cannot figure out what this game was all about. It consists of rounded stones, placed on a checkered board. I think the children made up the rules as they played. On the other side of the mango tree, there was a huge hill that seemed to go down and down forever. As Charlie looked over the mountain sides, about 10 miles away was the largest mountain peak. Charlie decided that he would take some of the older boys, hike that distance and climb to the mountain top. So Charlie and the boys started on their mountain journey. They hiked down a small path that would take them to the town that was named Golden Springs. From there, they walked down to a small river that was called the Waukee. At this time of year, the water was less than a foot deep. Although the river was not deep, it was very tricky to see. Stepping on the wet stones could cause a slip. In fact, that's exactly what happened to Charlie. He carefully put his foot on a stone but slipped and fell in the water. My, how the boys laughed. That was the funniest thing they had ever seen. As Charlie and the boys finally crossed the river, they decided to rest. Because of the hot sun, Charlie's shirt and pants were pretty much dried. So on they went. They reached the base of the mountain and started up the long narrow path. The path went up and up, around and around, over loose rocks and gravel. Finally, after climbing up the path for two hours, Charlie and the boys were finally on the tallest mountain peak. From there, way across the valleys, they could see Faith home. On the mountain peak, the air was cool and crisp. It was time to eat their lunch and enjoy the view, before it was time to hike down the mountain, back across the river and back up to Faith home. Just as Charlie and the boys arrived safely back to Faith home, it was time for supper. By this time they were very hungry and tired. It was a welcome treat to sit down to a plate of rice, curry goat, boiled bananas and yams. This is a typical Jamaican plate. It didn't take long for the food that was on the plate to disappear. There was one member of the Faith Home family who was not hungry at all. His name was Dookie. Dookie was the youngest of the children. He was four years old. When Charlie asked Dookie why he was not hungry Dookie replied, I already ate 24 mangoes and I am very full. After Charlie and the boys cleared the tables, they went back to the mango tree. One of the boys asked Charlie if he could bring his guitar and sing with them under the mango tree. Of course Charlie's response was in a Jamaican way, no problem man. By this time, the sun was going down and the moon was coming up. On top of the mountain, the moon was so big you could almost reach out and touch it. 
One of the songs that Charlie taught the boys, was a song that he wrote. It wasn't very long before the boys memorized all of Charlie's songs. Especially the one titled Little Children Sing a Happy Song, Sing It to the King of Kings. The next day, early in the morning, the boys decided to take Charlie down to the sugarcane field to teach him how to use a machete. Now, the machete is a very long blade that is very sharp. The boys taught Charlie how to sharpen the machete with a file. With one hard swing, Charlie whacked through a stalk of sugarcane. Sugarcane is a type of grass. Inside is a very sweet fiber. From that we make sugar. The boys asked Charlie if he wanted to taste the sugarcane. So one of the boys ripped open the stock and gave a piece of sugar cane to everyone. As they chewed it, the sweet juice filled their mouth. Charlie was very grateful for that experience. From then on he enjoyed chewing on sugar cane. Charlie discovered some other treats in the field with the boys, such as water coconuts. The boys loved to climb trees. Most of the boys went throughout the day in their bare feet. The bottom of their feet was like leather. So they had no problem climbing high up into the coconut tree to get a coconut for Charlie to taste. Look out below one of the boys yelled and down came the coconut. They took the machete and whacked the top off. Inside the coconut, is this delicious liquid they call coconut water. As Charlie brought the coconut to his mouth, tilted his head back and began to drink, the liquid spilled all over Charlie's shirt. The boys thought that was very funny. One other discovery Charlie made that day was coffee beans. Charlie's mom and dad drank coffee every day, but Charlie did not know where coffee came from or how it was grown. On the property of Faith Home, were hundreds of coffee plants. The boys showed Charlie how to pick the beans from the tree and through many processes, these beans would be ground up, roasted and eventually hot water would be poured over it. And that would be what Charlie's dad and mom drank every day. Charlie learned a lot that day. There were many new discoveries that he would never forget. As the day came to an end, the plan before bed was to once again meet under the mango tree. Before Charlie and the boys sang under the mango tree that night, they had a very tasty tree. It was one of the most common Jamaican treats you can find anywhere in any store. The treat is called a patty. It is a pastry with flaky crust and inside is ground up seasoned meat. My, how Charlie loved the patty. The children laughed and told jokes as they enjoyed this tasty snack. Before bedtime, Charlie would pray with the children, asking God's protection on them throughout the night and for a restful peaceful sleep. Charlie knew that the boys came from very difficult situations and were left at Faith home because their parents could not take care of them. Charlie assured them they could sleep in the peaceful arms of Jesus. Under the mango tree, the children would talk about how much they missed their parents and how hard it was to be away from them. Charlie's upbringing was very different. He had two loving caring parents. There was food to eat, every year new things to wear for school and just a wonderful place to live. Charlie began to realize that there were so many children who had no one to love them. No one who really cared for them. Underneath the mango tree, Charlie's heart was broken. He began to cry and could not stop. One of the boys saw him crying and asked him, Charlie what's wrong? Charlie could not respond. One of the boys said it's okay Charlie. We understand. We want you to know that we love you. Charlie realized that even though the children were orphans, they were not concerned about their own feelings but concerned about Charlie. This love started to transform Charlie's heart. Charlie began to see the world through a new set of eyes. The conversations under the mango tree now were more about the love of Jesus and how much he loves us. With Charlie's guitar in hand, they began to sing, Jesus loves me this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak but he is strong. Charlie would share with the children that our strength comes from the Lord and his love for us is like that river that they cross the day they climb the mountaintop. The love of Jesus is like a mighty flowing river that never stops. There would be many more wonderful times underneath the mango tree. There would be laughter, tears, excitement, stories and wonderful songs to sing. The life of Charlie and the children would make a lasting bond forever. Charlie's life was completely changed by the children and the children's lives were completely changed by Charlie's friendship and love. After a very long stay at Faith Home, it was time for Charlie to return back home to the United States. But there would be one last gathering at the mango tree. Charlie gathered all the children around for the last emotional time. Charlie wanted to make this a wonderful time, a very special one. 
He used the big mango tree as an illustration. He shared with the boys how big and tall the tree was and how the branches spread wide. How the branches shielded them from the hot sun during the day. How the tree would not be moved even when the strongest winds would blow against it. How the tree produced beautiful, delicious, sweet mangoes that they would eat every day to their heart's content. Then Charlie spoke from his heart. We are to be like this great mighty mango tree. When the hard harsh winds of life blow against us, we are not moved nor shaken because we are firmly rooted and grounded in Jesus. We are to shield, protect, love and watch over one another just like the mighty branches of the mango tree protected us from the sun and from the rain. And lastly we are to bear much fruit that will help people grow and to be strong in the Lord Jesus. After Charlie told the boys how much Jesus loved them and how much Charlie loved the boys, they sang a song that Charlie wrote just for them. Time had arrived on the following morning of the last meeting they had under the mango tree. Charlie's suitcase was packed and placed in the back of the van. It was time to say goodbye. The children hugged and kissed Charlie, not knowing when they would see him again. With all the strength that Charlie had inside of him, he held back the ocean of tears. Charlie's heart was saddened as the van drove off. In the mirrors of the van, he could see the children waving goodbye and the sounds echoing off the mountainsides. We love you Charlie, we love you Charlie. Charlie was at the airport, waiting for his flight to go back home. Tears started to flow with emotions of leaving the children. After a long flight, Charlie found himself safely back home. For months, Charlie felt out of place. His heart was still in Jamaica with the children. Charlie would receive many letters from the children over the course of the year. Then a great opportunity came Charlie's way. It was an opportunity for Charlie to use his music for raising money for hungry children around the world. For Charlie, this would be very successful because of his experience at Faith Home and his love for the boys. 30 years passed by and Charlie received an opportunity to return back to Jamaica. After 30 years, Charlie was back on the island of Jamaica. The children that once greeted him were now adults. Charlie was once again united with the people that impacted his life in such a great way. But now it was no longer Charlie that they called him, but Dad. One of the first things that Charlie wanted to see was Faith home. So they drove out of the city, up the winding roads, and much to Charlie's surprise they arrived at the place where Charlie once knew as Faith home. It's no longer there. Some of the buildings are gone, some of the buildings just shells of concrete. The soccer field where they once played, has now turned into a jungle of bamboo. The building where Charlie and the boys stayed is now rubble and dirt. But the old mango tree where Charlie and the boys had such wonderful times, singing and playing and laughing, still stands strong. The mango tree still bears fruit and has not been damaged by the wind and rain and frequent hurricanes. Charlie could not forget what he said to the boys before he left 30 years ago. To be strong in the Lord is strong as this mango tree that has weathered the storms of time. All else is gone but what stands is the tall mango tree and the wonderful memories that they had under it.